there, my Sassy Fit Queens. How y'all doing today? Today is another segment of Sassy Fitness Empowerment Fridays where I will provide you all with helpful tips that you can take along with you and practice in your day-to-day lives. Did you all have a good week? (laughs) I surely did. And I'm hoping that the knowledge you received from me today will add to the amazing week that you see going forward. So, what will we discuss today? Hmm, I'm so glad you asked me that and I'm so excited to say. Today, we're going to talk about health and its significance as far as sexual health for all the beauties of the world. Yep, women! Boom, yeah. So, let's dive right into it, shall we? All right, all right, all right. Here we go. So, are you aware that your weight is a contributing factor to your sexual health? I'm sure you all know that there is one thing that scares women more than the vaginal speculum. Yep, you guessed it, the scale. So, how many of us are self-conscious about our weight? But it's important to be open and honest with yourself and your doctor about your eating habits and exercise habits so you can brainstorm together ways to get your weight in check. For starters, shedding unnecessary pounds may help improve your ovulation and pregnancy rates. Many of you beauties may not be aware that the excess pounds can cause your body to produce extra estrogen, which may throw off your menstrual cycle, hindering your chances of conceiving. We have enough estrogen, ladies. We don't need no extra. Another thing women can't stand is PMS and period cramps. I'm sure y'all can agree, right? It's been proven by many health studies that women who are very overweight are also three times more likely to have severe PMS symptoms such as period-related cramps, bloating, and mood swings, more so than those with healthier weight. It's very important that we understand this. Now, I'm not sure why many of us lack the motivation to get up and be active, let alone change our eating habits, but the information that I'm providing you should be motivation in itself. I'm sure we all would like to lead healthy lives and be around to watch and participate in the growth of our children and grandchildren. I have told many people that my goal is to live to be a healthy 150 year old woman And I've gotten some crazy looks for that statement. But truth is, why not? Why would I not want to set a goal of life longevity for myself? I've had people tell me that 150 is too long a life to live and that there is nothing left to see after 100 years of life. But I beg to differ. I believe that there is still plenty to see and never enough to see. I understand this because I believe that I can change so many women's lives. And if I were to live to be a 150 year old, do you know how many people I'll be able to show that it can be achieved? And I can also teach them how I sustain such a healthy life and what healthy habits I practice so that I can be a motivating factor for many. The entire makeup of the human body is centered on how we care for it, the foods we eat and how active we are. Our cardiovascular levels will not be in one place if we are inactive. Our guts will be out of whack and unhealthy if we don't eat the right foods. And then, due to gut health being the center of overall health, the entire system of our bodies will fall apart if we don't properly nurture it. Do you see how all of this goes hand in hand? Lack of properly nurturing the temple that God gave us even affects our sexual livelihood and the ability to bear children. Think about that, ladies. Get this. Women entering their first trimester with a high BMI, body mass index, are at greater risk for developing high blood pressure and diabetes during their pregnancy, as well as having complications during childbirth. This is not what we want, especially in this day and age when a lot of we women are having 
children later in our ages. Some of us are having kids at 35, 40, and even older. So we gotta make sure that our body mass index is in check. I've heard time and time again from many different individuals that women who are pregnant need to eat as though they are eating for multiple people. This is the farthest from the truth. You should not overeat just because you're carrying a baby. You should make sure that your meals are balanced and that you drink plenty of water. Now I'm not suggesting at all that you restrict your calories or try to lose weight. Don't get that. Please don't. Because dieting to lose weight during pregnancy can be hazardous to you and your baby, especially since a weight loss regimen may restrict important nutrients you need, such as iron, folic acid, and other important vitamins and minerals. Now, I do encourage fine-tuning your eating habits to ensure that you're receiving adequate nutrition for the health of you and your baby. Healthy eating during pregnancy is critical to your baby's growth and development. In order to get the nutrients you need, you must eat from a variety of food groups including fruit and vegetables, bread and grains, protein sources, and dairy products. And don't believe that misconception that if you're pregnant you can't work out because that's the farthest from the truth as well. And it will help you in the labor and delivery room, trust me. And typically, you'll need to consume an extra 300 calories a day, not 600 or more. Let me repeat that. You will need to consume an extra 300 calories a day during pregnancy, not 600 or more. Please let that sink in. Now that I've gotten pregnancy out of the way, I'm going to share a few tips that many may be ashamed to talk about, but it's needed. I got about five of them, so here we go. Tip number one. So if you're taking birth control pills and you experience nausea, try taking them at different times of the day or night. And this is because hormones in the pill that you're taking may be easier on your stomach depending on the time of day. Tip number two. Do you experience a pee-like leakage? during high impact exercises during certain times of the month? If so, try switching from your high impact exercises to lower impact exercises two weeks before your period. And this is because the lack of voluntary control over your urination peaks during the second half of your cycle. What's the likely reason you ask? Eh, possibly a drop of estrogen. So, Less strenuous exercise is recommended during that time. Now, if you're not experiencing this, it doesn't apply to you, but I'm sure there are some women who do. Tip number three. If you experience painful sex, make sure to first seek your gynecologist for a pelvic exam. If the pain is not severe, try increasing foreplay for added lubrication or Use an OTC vaginal lubricant and experiment with different positions since the pain is often caused by the angle of penetration or pressure on certain muscles and joints. Tip number four. If you experience a mystery discharge, make sure you pay attention to the color. If it's gray or greenish and smells bad, you may have bacterial vaginosis or an STD, but both can be treated with antibiotics, so don't trip out too much. Is it thick, odorless, burning, and itching? Uh, that could be a yeast infection. Now those three-day over-the-counter remedies may not work as well, so doctors recommend that you try a five-day one instead, and most importantly, if symptoms worsen, please go see your doctor. And last but not least, tip number five. For worry-free workouts, try Game Silver Lining Pennies. They're only $20 at game.com and game is spelled G-A-I-A-M as in Michael. And this is an antimicrobial treated organic cotton panty that is breathable and it helps banish any odor and prevent infections during your 30 to 90 minute workout routine. 
we all need to make sure we got that in check right right <laughs> so fitness and health covers much more than just how often you work out and what you eat it also covers your sexual health and as women it is very important to learn and understand our bodies remember what works for one may not work for all but it is imperative that we do our due diligence and work to find out what does work because last thing we want is to try something that works for someone else and it doesn't work for us and then we just completely lost if you're not sure ask your doctor I mean this goes all the way from nutritional health physical health and sexual health my challenge for you beauties today is to get fit sexually now I know this is a topic that's hard to talk about and or listen to but it is needed and nine times out of ten the hardest topics to listen to or to even discuss are the ones that we need to hear the most all right queens that's all i have for you today so y'all know what to do if you like this video please 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 share hit that like button and subscribe below and until next friday chiquita nicole sassy fit is out